Now, having specified and thought about a model, um, we now need to estimate it. Now, the way um, we're going to estimate it in this section of the book, in this chapter, will be to use least squares estimation. Now, we want to estimate the Vita coefficients and the concept, the principle of least squares says that we're going to take our errors, square them, sum them up, and we're going to minimize, or we're going to find the Vita values that minimize these squared errors. Now, in section 7.9 of the book, um, where we um, where we present the matrix formulation of regression, we actually show uh, how the principle of least squares leads to um, the least squares estimator and uh, a nice closed form solution. So I encourage you to uh, go to section 7.9 and understand that it is actually a very nice derivation. For the purpose of our section here, we're going to use the TSLM function uh, to estimate a model. So Y is our response variable, X1 to XK are our K predictors. Um, and this TSLM function is within the model function and that will return a set of estimated coefficients. Let's have a look at what the output looks like. So first, the specification of the model. So we have our YT, consumption, our variables, our predictor variables, four of them, income, production, unemployment, and savings. Notice that I don't have to specify an intercept. An intercept is automatically uh, estimated unless I don't want it to be. And for the purpose of our book and the purpose of uh, what we do here, uh, we will never uh, estimate a model without an intercept. We always include an intercept for purposes, for reasons you'll see in the next section. Um, if you didn't want to include the, the intercept, you'll include a zero um, uh, to start off before your predictors, and that will... Um, signal to the program that you don't want an intercept. Now let's concentrate a little bit on the output. So the this first column, the estimate, shows you the estimated coefficients. So Vita naught, which is the intercept, up to Vita 4, which is the coefficient of savings. Um, it is worth comparing these coefficients to the correlation coefficients, the pairwise correlation coefficients. Um, they are related, but of course, here, remember that we are taking, we are looking at the effect of each variable has on Y, taking into account the other variables. And remember, these variables are correlated between them, hence, they're not just pairwise comparisons. Now, I've made a note here for to talk about forecasting versus inference. Your output also gives you um, some uh, T stats and P values associated with those. For the purposes of forecasting, for our purposes, we'll never consider these. In subsequent sections of the books of the book, we will look at um, better ways or uh, alternative ways of selecting predictors or dropping predictors, but inference will not be one of them. So once you've estimated your coefficients, you can get your fitted values, and let's have a plot of those. The orange line here are the fitted values on top of the data itself. And by just uh, eyeballing this, you can see that um, it fits the data pretty well. Now, remember, this is all in sample. This doesn't mean that we're going to have great forecasts from this model. It means that our model fits the data very, very well uh, in sample, or at least um, by looking at this graph, it seems to be uh, fitting well. An alternative way of looking at this is uh, a scatter plot of our fitted values versus our actual data. And the strong positive relationship here shows that, again, uh, uh, a nice fit. OK, now there's um, official ways, uh, formal ways of thinking about the fit of uh, the model to the data, uh, the goodness of fit, uh, generally known as the goodness of fit. Now, two regularly used uh, measures is the coefficient of determination, R squared. So uh, R squared is defined by the ratio between the variance of our fitted values and the variance of the data. So um, the maximum of this will be one. So if uh, the variance of our fitted values is um, identical to the variance of the data, that means that we fitted the data uh, uh, very, very well. Um, so it's the, let's say it's the variance accounted or by the predictors. Um, an alternative way and a related measure is the standard error uh, of the regression, which is related to the size of the average error that the model produces. Um, 
notice one big difference between the two is that um, by that this accounts for the degrees of freedom. Um, so you have you account for the number of parameters you estimate here, k parameters. Uh, R square does not. Now, in subsequent sections of the book, where we start selecting predictors, we'll talk about um, uh, how not to use R squared and how not to use, uh, or uh, at least for selecting predictors. But these can, these certainly people use these commonly to at least get a first indication of the goodness fit of uh, the model, estimated model. Um, hence, for our model, our R squared is 0.768. The average error produced or the standard is 0.31.